welcome back everyone. So today, uh, while I'm back at the board, which is nice, obviously, um, I'll just get right to the point. Today I'm going to uh, be reviewing, or actually not reviewing, we, I've never recorded a video like this on my channel. I'm going to be covering a basic proof of the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, i.e. the fact that the fact that if you take the derivative with respect to x of some integral uh, from some constant a to x of f of t dt, then you'll actually receive the original function f of x back. Uh, so why don't we get started? And I'm assuming that you've heard of this before uh, and you've worked with this su such a topic. If you haven't, then I would recommend uh, checking out other videos on the topic. There are quite a few good ones. Let me put this down. Okay. So uh, why don't we start off with a bit of a graph. So we can put it here. We have a rather large graph, maybe. And we'll, we're going to assume that that's our t-axis and that's our y-axis. And let's take some random function uh, across the across this uh, uh, two-dimensional plane. I don't know, something like, that's an interesting one. Okay, and this is obviously continuous. Uh, we're assuming that the, we're going to take, we're, we're just gonna assume that the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is in play here and that this function is continuous. And let's say we have some points, I don't know, A, and maybe that's not enough space. A and B, and we can do something like that, right? And if we consider the integral, just a quick recap, if we consider the integral from A to B of f of t dt, where dt is just going to be the small change in, uh, in time on the t-axis, and f of t is going to be the height of the function. This is going to give us the area under this curve, under the function at the intervals a and b. Right, so now that you, hopefully you remember that, uh, let's consider some other point x here. And this is just any random point. I don't, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle. It can be equal to a, it can be equal to b. We can write that x is, you know, somewhere, somewhere in between a and b, just like that. And what, why don't we consider the area from a to x? Let's consider the area from a to x. The reason I'm not going to use my purple marker as much is because it's kind of dry, because I... I was using it for too long. So that, that would be the, oh, I actually erased our x here. So that would be our area from a to x. So we can write it, hopefully this will work. a to x, f of t, dt. Same thing. I'm not going to draw an arrow because I color coded it. And now let's now let's consider let's consider another point. Let's say we have some uh, we have some point x plus delta x. Okay, we have some point x plus delta x, and that's between x and b, obviously. So let's say we have that type of point. So it's some kind of small change in x and x plus x plus delta x. Okay. This is our, for the most part, our final key component. Uh, let's see if that works. That would be f of x plus delta x. All of these are just the counterparts of the <coughs> t-axis. Okay. So now let's want now we uh, I want to consider the area between a and x plus delta x. We'll use red for that. Okay, and 
and obviously that area is going to be a tiny bit larger than this area here. We'll see why we're doing this in a moment. Okay, I'm going to start using my broom from here on out. So let's, now let's, now we can see that, now we can start taking into consideration taking the derivative of such, an, such integrals. So what we can do is we can say that at capital F of, of t, or capital F of x, we'll worry about the x later on, is equal to and now what's the definition of the derivative? If you remember, it's just going to be, well, normally, when, you, when we don't factor in integrals, uh, normally, I'll just remind you here. Normally, it would be f prime of x equals f of delta x. Oh, I forgot the limit. How could I? That would have been bad. Limit as delta x approaches zero of f of, oh, let me not speak, delta x plus x minus f of x over delta x. So hopefully you get that. Okay, so now we can, even though, well, in this case, we can just say that instead of it being uh, lowercase f, we can just, instead we're going to use integrals, so we can write it as f of that, f of that, okay? So let's do that. So let's write limit if delta x approaches zero of so it's going to be, well, this is going to look a bit ugly, but try it out. A to x plus delta x of f of t dt minus the integral from a to x of f of t dt, all over delta x still. Okay, so now what, what, what does this evaluate to? Well, let's resort to the graph. Okay, so it might not be as that clear, but we know that the red part is a to x plus delta x, right? And we also know that the this green part is going, or the yeah, the purple part, I mean, is going to be, well, that's going to be just a from a to x. And what if we sub what happens when we subtract this area from this area? Well, it just looks like we get this area here, right, between x and x plus delta x. So now we can just simplify all of that mess to, well, the integral from a, uh, from x to delta x plus delta x of f of t dt, all over delta x. So let's simplify this, it's going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of one over delta x times, obviously I'm just rewriting this delta x in the bottom, from a to delta x plus x of f of t dt. This looks quite a bit more simple. You know, I'll write this out here. Okay, well, now what? It might seem like we're stuck, but actually what we can, uh, we can make the relation that if you remember, uh, this very uh, disinteresting theorem in calculus, or it's pretty self-explanatory actually, that if you take that some, uh, some, some uh, f of c, some c where f of c, or, or I'll just write it out and then I'll explain it here. So, it's 
called the fundamental time theorem. Okay? And that says that some f of c, where c, I'll write that out in a second, times delta x, where, where c is in between delta x and x plus delta x. Okay, that's crucial. So c is in between x plus delta and x plus delta x. is equal to the integral from x to delta x plus x times f of t dt. Okay. Well, now let's, well, let's just look at what this means and why this works. It really is quite self-explanatory. And then we'll make the relation between this and this. Well, well, we can see that we can actually see that um, if c is some region between x and x plus delta x, so let's say c is, what mm, color should I use? I'm going to any more colors. Let's say c is somewhere here, right? And f of c is just going to be somewhere up here. f of c. Might be smudging a bit, sorry for that. So c is somewhere between x and x plus delta x. Right? And what is this saying here? Well, f of c, so essentially the height at this point in the curve, times delta x, which is just the change in x, so it's just the small change here. It's not x plus delta x, it's delta x here. That's equal to the area from x to x plus delta x in this region, basically. So it's times f of t dt. So that, that, that should be pretty self-explanatory. That's the definition of integral. Integrals. You're adding up little small rectangles usually. Uh, well, in uh, presumably in um, uh, calculus one here, you're adding up these small rectangles, or unless you're using a Riemann integrals or definite integrals, you're adding you're finding the area under the specific region. Okay. Well, now let's manipulate it. So this this can become f of c equals 1 over delta x times the integral from x to delta x plus x of f of t dt. Now we see that this is basically the same thing that we have here, apart from limit the limit as delta x approaches, well, 0, right? And what we can actually do is we can actually this is really cool. We can actually substitute f of c for all of this business. That's equal to f of c. Okay? And let's rewrite that. Sorry. So f prime of x at capital F prime of x, get rid of that, is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of c. Now let's look at this for a second. Well, we know that f of c, again, is somewhere between x and x plus delta x. And let's think about this for a moment. Let's just think about c. Well, when delta x is gradually getting closer to x, actually we can just we plug in x for it, it just becomes x. Then c will also shrink, and when delta x becomes actually becomes 0, then we'll get to x, and that therefore c is also going to be equal to x. And if c is equal to x, then f of then f of c equals or the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of c is actually equal to f of x. And, well, if we don't get it yet, then we can just rewrite this. f prime of x, well, is equal to f of x. Wow. 
happy face, exclamation points, larger happy face. Yay. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that. In my opinion, this is a really interesting thing. Uh, and hopefully you learned something from it. If you didn't learn anything, hopefully you found this uh, just, well, interesting uh, at the most. Um, so I'll be recording in the following, following few days, um, in the following days. Um, the reason I wasn't recording in the past few days was because, well, firstly, um, I couldn't find a good camera angle. Uh, and also I was working on a lot of math on my own and physics as well. So I was a bit busy and I was also in a different location for some time. So hopefully you enjoyed this nevertheless and have a nice day.